Hey everybody, if you're like me, you enjoy the garden and you don't want to put a lot of pesticides on what you're growing, what you're going to be feeding your family, and you probably also have pests out in your garden that you wished you didn't have, in particular slugs. So we have a large lettuce bed and right now there's quite a few slugs on there, so every day we go to harvest, we're finding slugs in the leaves. So in order to take care of that, I'm going to show you how you can make a couple slug traps with items you probably have sitting around the house. So I had some expired sour cream in the fridge, so I went ahead and cleaned out those containers. We're going to use this for the actual trap, and we've been getting quite a bit of rain lately, so we're going to make these waterproof traps. So what we're going to do is, you're going to go up a couple inches, and you are going to cut some openings large enough for the slugs to get in. You want to have a couple, an inch or so off the bottom to hold your the stuff that I'm going to tell you about here in a moment that's going to actually attract the slugs. Now you could use a beer trap, but actually what the slug is attracted to in the beer is the yeast and we can actually make our own uh, without actually having beer. So if you don't have beer on hand, you don't have to go out to the store and buy beer. If you do have beer on hand, you could substitute uh, the mix that we're going to make for that. So I'm going to go all the way around. We're going to make about four openings. You, the key is you want to make sure the bottom is about the same because when you pour the liquid in, you want to make sure that uh, there's plenty of uh, room in the bottom of the container for the liquid to actually to be. So let's see. And I'm doing two, I'm making two slug traps today. I want to put one on each side of the lettuce. There we go. Be careful not to cut your finger. I'm using a box cutter. I have a lot of these laying around the house from, I used to, a long time ago, be in grocery retail. So I have a lot of box cutters. So when you're done, it's gonna look like that. That's kind of overhead view. The lid's gonna be on top. Let's go ahead and do the other one. I'm gonna do this one a little bit higher just depending on what the slugs prefer. They might have a preference on how high they're willing to climb. So we'll see. You can also use scissors if you want. However, scissors will not poke into this soft plastic without really bending it um, quite a bit. So, this box cutter is extremely sharp. Now you can use the scissors to cut the ends like that. But if you try to use it to cut the, the longer strip, it's not going to be as effective. So, cut the strip. Cut the strip. Put it with the scissors, cut the end. Cut the end. That one's got three openings so far. We'll do one more smaller opening. Just like that. All right. So as you can see, there we go. Now, to actually make the mix, you're gonna need three ingredients. Water, or four ingredients, water, sugar, flour, and yeast. So per cup of water, you're gonna need one teaspoon of sugar, one teaspoon of flour, and one teaspoon of yeast. I'm right now, I'm filling up my jar of water. I'm gonna make two cups of this mixture. So and then we're gonna take it outside and we're gonna pour it in the traps. So I just filled this up with two cups of water. Get my teaspoon measure. Since I'm doing two cups, I'm gonna do two teaspoons of sugar. Flour. I think I might have misspoke earlier. You, 
per cup you do one teaspoon of flour, one teaspoon of sugar, and a half a teaspoon of uh, yeast. So I did two flour, two sugar, since I'm doing two cups, and then I'm gonna do one teaspoon of yeast. All right, once you get all those ingredients put into, and you don't have to use a mason jar, I'm just using a mason jar. Um, that way I can shake it up really well. It'd be too hard to pour the ingredients in the wood. So once you get that all shaken up and you have your traps made, the next step is to put them out in the garden. So that's where we're going to go next. All right, so now that we're out in the garden, and as you can see, as you can probably tell, it's extremely wet. We've had like nine days of straight rain. So the waterproof trap is definitely going to be nice. Just going to put that in on the ground, kind of push it in a little bit, push it down a little bit. And then you're going to take the mixture and you're going to pour it in just so that it's up to the bottom edge of the slits that we made. Now what's going to happen is the slugs are going to crawl up the side of the container and then they're going to go in and they're actually going to drown. Uh, people used to think that you used a beer trap because they'd go in and like, I don't know, get intoxicated or something and not be able to get out, but actually they just go in and drown. So that's what's going on. Um, yeah, so that's all there is to it. We're going to put one trap there and put one on this side. You're just wanting to give the slugs something to go towards that's gonna to be more appealing than the lettuce. So they're really attracted to the smell of this concoction. And you want to, a little tip is, you're gonna to wanna to check on this at least every two days especially if it's warmer outside because that yeast mixture is going to start smelling really bad and you're going to have slugs in there they're going to be you know dying and you don't want it to get all all nasty and then accidentally spill that nasty concoction on your produce but uh yeah this is definitely going to be helpful in uh, reducing our slug issue and there's not sure if you can see it but there's one of our little dudes right there but uh when I come out here and harvest lettuce, every handful I get, I find probably five to six slugs. So I'm definitely wanting to uh, to thin out the problem. But yeah, that's all there is to it. This should protect our Swiss chard and our kales as well. Uh, I've got two traps within about five foot of each other. Um, if, if the traps are getting really filled up with slugs, I may put a third trap on the other side of the red Russian kale over there. But uh, otherwise, I'll just do these two traps. And I'll check on them every two days and I'll keep at putting them back out until I start seeing uh, no more slugs are getting captured. And once that happens, then I'll, uh, I'll quit putting them out for a few days and then start it up again. So cause I don't want to waste, you know, resources, flower sugar yeast. There's no sense in putting it out if you're not actively having an issue. But this will definitely help uh, remedy the problem. So, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.